I have some good news for you. This new moon in Sagittarius is looking real cute. Hi, I'm Megan, Sagittarius rising and fun witchy friend. A little bit of housekeeping before we get started. I started doing blog posts on the new and full moons. Check that out on itsmeganarcher.com. I will link it below if you'd like even more information as well as a collective tarot card reading. And let's get straight into the video. This new moon in Sagittarius is going to be occurring on Wednesday, November 23rd at 5.57 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Sagittarius season this year runs from November 22nd until December 21st. Sagittarius is a fire sign, which means it does have that aggressive, assertive energy, and it is a mutable sign. So while it is fiery, it is still very adaptable as mutable signs are at the end of their season and act as a transition to the next season. So they tend to be more flowy and more adaptable and more easily changeable. Sagittarius's glyph is of a bow and arrow, and Sagittarius is often associated with the archer, as well as Kai Chiron, who is a centaur healer who trained Achilles. Sagittarius is a very adventurous, very joyful, and very happy-go-lucky sign. This Sagittarius new moon gives us a little bit of brevity, a little bit more keeping it light, keeping it joyful, than in the darkness and emotional intensity of this Scorpio eclipse season, which we are finally exiting. And thank goodness for that. Finally, some positive, fun, expansive energy. A little recap, so why we manifest with the new moon and not the full moon is because the new moon is the start of the energetic inner cycle. The new moon is a dark and contemplative time. And after the new moon, the moon begins to grow in light. So that's the best time to set your intentions and try to grow your intentions. So the new moon is intention setting, manifesting in the full moon is more of a release as that energy is then going to fade down into the new. That's why I highly recommend aligning with the moons because then you are utilizing those energies instead of fighting them. If you've ever tried to get a lot of stuff done on the new moon, you're just tired on the new moon. And if you've ever tried to sit still during a full moon, you will get really antsy and really anxious and frustrated. So we want to use these energies for our benefit. Sagittarius is the ninth sign of the zodiac and as such it rules the ninth house of philosophy, travel, higher education, and spirituality. So this month check to see what's in your ninth house as well as see what house Sagittarius Sagittarius is in to see what areas of your life might be experiencing a new beginning or a new kind of shakeup during this new moon in Sagittarius. Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter, which is the planet of luck, opportunity, and expansion. If you know anyone who has a lot of Sagittarius placements, they often seem like they have a lot going on for them. Like when you find out someone's a Sagittarius, it's like, of course you're a Sagittarius, you know what I mean? No matter what they do, they always seem to land on their feet, and that is because they are ruled by Jupiter, the planet of luck. I know a Sagittarius who is quite literally a rocket scientist. On the high side, Sagittariuses are very charming and enthusiastic and happy-go-lucky. They're that mutable energy. They're very flexible. They're always down to travel. They love to explore. In general, the full moon is a better time to do any shadow work because the full moon illuminates shadows. However, just some shadows of Sagittarius to be aware of. On the low side, Sagittarius can kind of have know-it-all energy. Even if they're wrong, they won't accept the fact that you're telling them that they're wrong. They have to learn why they're wrong for themselves and they can kind of be kind of snooty about it. When out of balance, Sagittarius energy can also limit itself out of fear. You know, on the high side, Sagittarius Sagittarius energy can be very expansive and risk-taking almost, but in a good way. Whereas on the low side, Sagittarius's might just stop themselves from doing things out of fear. In case you can't tell, I really love Sagittarius energy. I personally am a Sag rising and a lot of my best friends have prominent Sagittarius placements. I just think it's a fun, like if you're having a party, invite a Sagittarius. They might show up late and half drunk, but they are going to be the light of the party and they are going to have so much fun. Some colors you can incorporate and you can use crystals of these colors, wear these colors, do eye makeup in these colors, whatever you want in order to channel that Sagittarius energy are purples, blues, yellows, kind of like dark royal color. And as far as glamour magic is concerned, I recommend putting together an outfit in an area that you want to expand. Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter, the planet of expansion. So if you're trying to become more fit, wear a really cool workout outfit. If you're trying to be more creative, maybe throw on some big overalls and a shirt you can paint in. Put together an outfit, but also make it utilitarian. That is very Sagittarius. Some crystals you can incorporate and you can hold these while you're meditating. Maybe make a crystal grid or just add these to your altar. So some crystals for Sagittarius are Iolite, Red Jasper, Aventurine, and Turquoise. 
and some rituals you can incorporate. And I recommend doing these rituals within a couple days on either side of the new moon. If you're doing any manifestation work, wait until that 557 time and do it after then because then the moon will be growing instead of shrinking. The rest of the rituals you can do whenever, but if you're specifically trying to bring something in, wait until after that time. The first ritual you can do is to explore your town. Try out somewhere new. Sagittarius is such an adventurous and explorative energy, so try checking out somewhere in your neighborhood or in your town that you haven't been before. If there's any place in your town that you walk by and always say, oh, that's cute, I should totally go there, this is your invitation to finally go there. Another ritual is to set all of your travel plans for 2023. While I recommend setting more specific goals on the Capricorn new moon, the archetype of Sagittarius is that archer with the quiver on their back kind of going to see the world. This is the perfect time to brainstorm your adventures for 2023. I just got a planner that has a whole section on planning travel. I will link my Law of Attraction planner video review up, but I'm going to be filling out that section during the Sagittarius new moon. And since Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter, that planet of luck, if you plan during during this time, your plans should go a little bit better than if you were to plan them during, say, eclipse season or maybe if Mercury was retrograde. This new moon is also a great time to write down small but actionable steps that will lead you towards another goal. Sagittarius reminds us that it's about the journey and not necessarily the destination. Even if it's as simple as buying a book that's kind of related to the field you want to study, every step gets you closer and closer to your goal. So this Sagittarius new moon invites us to break down our goals as much as possible possible and let them take us where they're going to take us. Another ritual for this Sagittarius new moon is to write down and clarify your dreams. And I want you to dream big here. Set goals and dreams that are far outside of where you would be comfortable. What's the phrase? It's like if you aim for the stars, if you miss, you'll still land among the stars or something like that. That's kind of where I'm going with this. If you dream super, super big, and even if you don't achieve it, you will still do pretty well for yourself. So don't be the one to limit your yourself. Sagittarius has such an expansive and positive and everything's going to be okay energy. So this new moon is the perfect time to set those goals for those big, big lofty dreams. Sagittarius rules the hips and thighs, the areas of the body that propel us forward. So some yoga poses you can do are happy baby, runner's lunge, half splits, and pigeon. And some journaling questions are, what do I need to release to step into my full potential? How can I find silver linings in past events? What leap of faith do I need to make? What has the past year taught me? Where am I resisting new energy? What internal narratives and stories can I rewrite? Where am I doubting my potential? And some tarot questions are, what energy can help me expand? Where can I invite adventure into my life? And where is fear limiting my potential? For tarot, I like to do a three card spread that has the format of past, present, and future. So that's why there are three tarot questions that are phrased like past, present, future. That's just how I like to do it. I also did a collective reading for this new moon in my blog post on itsmeganarcher.com. I will link that here and below. Shameless plug if you want to check that out. I hope you enjoyed this new moon ritual guide and the adventurous and optimistic sign of Sagittarius. And if you're starting to finally plan for 2023, I have planner reviews on both the Law of Attraction and Magic of Eye astrological planners that I will link here. So definitely check those out. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye.